Hey guys, welcome uh, to my video. Hopefully it can help you guys out and save you a little bit of time. Because I know I spent a lot of time on it. So, my goal was basically to set up Plex in a Linux container within Proxmox. Um, and bind my Synology NFS mount to it, which I'll store all my media on. Um, and there just wasn't a lot of documentation. There was some other videos, but just wasn't a lot of clear information. So I wanted to make one and walk you through the process step by step. All right, so to begin here, we're going to go ahead and start by creating a new container up here on the top right. We're going to go ahead and name this one Plex Test. And we want to click um, uncheck that unprivileged container. It is technically more secure, um, but it causes issues when bind mounting NFS shares and makes it a little more complex. So for now we're just going to go with this and make a password. I will be making another video on how to do it on an unprivileged container, um, but that is to come in the future. So my templates are stored on my Synology, and I'll go ahead and choose Ubuntu 18.04. We'll give this one only 20 gigabytes of RAM. Generally, you won't need a whole lot, um, since your movies and everything will be stored on your Synology or wherever your share is coming from. But some of your metadata might be stored on here, so just give yourself enough space. Go ahead and give this six CPU cores and four gigabytes of memory, one gigabyte of swap. I'd probably give it more memory in a real use case, um, but for now that's fine. And all likewise in a real use case, and on my other Plex. One, I do have a static IP so that it doesn't move, but for this instance, I'll go ahead and select DHCP. And stick with the host DNS settings. Just confirm everything is as you would expect, and we'll go ahead and click Finished. Whenever we get a task OK, we'll know that it's done making the container. Looks like it's finished. From here we'll go ahead and start it. And we'll log in as our root uh, user with the created or the password that we just created. So if we go ahead and check CD into our mount folder right now, we'll see that there's nothing in it, um, as you would expect with a new container. Um, but we have our Synology NFS share already mounted onto our Proxmox host. So we're just going to mount that into our container again. So to do that, we'll go ahead and go to our shell of our node, our Proxmox node. And we're going to cd into etc pve lxc. Do an ls, and we'll see our config files for the three containers that I have so far. We know that the one we're dealing with is 107. So we'll do a nano 107 to go ahead and edit it. And I just out of habit put it here. But this is the line that we're going to go ahead and add. And I will um, add all of these config, copy and paste for you guys um, so you can walk along. Now we want to um, make this match up to what our actual, so this is our source mount and this is our destination mount on the container and so we know and I'll show you how to find this but I know that this one 
is mount slash PVE slash Synology. And the folder specifically that I'm looking for is Plex. And you need to take out this space right here, otherwise it's not going to mount correctly. And I want this is going to be our destination mount in our container. We'll go ahead and put it in Synology slash Plex as well. So to save our file, we'll do a control O and you'll say file name to write. We'll do enter. And you'll see wrote nine lines to confirm that it's saved. Control X. And now it's important because I've rebooted my host, my node, my Proxmox node a couple times. Um, to go to back to your container console. Now, when we see the end amount, actually, sorry, do a reboot on the container. And if we get any errors here, it's generally because our config file and the line that we added is incorrect. Either the path from your source or the syntax, maybe you didn't take that space out. Um, We'll just double check that and we'll go ahead and log back in. And now when we see the indoor mount, we'll see our Synology bind mount NFS share. Continue to CD in. We'll see Plex. And my <coughs> excuse me, my individual folders with my movies and TV shows. So from here, we're ready to sign into Plex and connect our server and start adding libraries. All right, so now that we've got our bind mount mounted to our container and we can see our folders that are going to hold our media, we're going to want to actually install Plex and have it be updatable with the apt update command um, within Ubuntu. So to go ahead and do that, we're going to run um, a wget command, and we're going to go actually to the Plex downloads page. You're going to get your distribution, and for me, it's going to be this 1604, whoops, 1604-64-bit, and I'm going to copy that link address, and I'm going to go back here. And we'll do this as root wget and paste that. So that is going to go out and download the latest Plex um, software or files. So we went ahead and did that. And we don't need sudo because we're already root. Okay, so now it should have downloaded and installed. Go ahead and check that by doing a system control status plex media server. And you can see that it is running. So dumb, but anyways, do that. So now, okay, so now that we've installed Plex, we've enabled it to um, start when you start the containers. We want to update it whenever we do an apt update command with Ubuntu. So to do that, we'll do a couple things. We are First, going to uh, check which files deep actually got depackaged when we ran that depackage Plex Media Server, and this L flag will list that. It's quite extensive, um, but this is all of the things 
that got depackaged. And we're looking for this one right here, ATC app sources, source list, Plex Media Server dot list. We're going to nano into that so that we can edit it. <clears throat> and here on this third line, we're going to uncomment um, that. So like it's like that. Go ahead and control O to save, press enter to write it, and then control X to exit. And next what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and pull those, that file from, from, that, uh, from this repo right here with a wget. And again, I'll copy and paste all these in for you guys. And we're going to get this error. GN UPG not installed. No big deal. All we're going to do is apt install GN UPG. Let it do its thing. Yes. And no big deal. Now we'll run this again. And we'll get an OK now. So now we'll do a sudo apt get up, or we don't need sudo, we'll do another apt update. Oops, spelled it wrong. And we'll see right here, hit 6, Plex public repo. So it's going to download the latest in Plex and Plex. Uh, you know, updates every single time we do that, just along with all of our other Ubuntu files. It'll be nice and clean and easy. Okay, so now we're ready to go on to um, our web GUI of Plex, and we'll just go to the um, web address or the IP address of our container, um, port 32400. So in my case, it's 168. One, and I actually don't know what it is, but you can see that here. Oh, maybe not. So, what we'll do is an IF config, and it's not installed. Try this again here in just a second. So, we can see here dot one six nine. Port 32400 uh, slash web. Now we'll see our login to our Plex, and I've already created mine. So you can do go ahead and do that when uh, before you have this set up. Go ahead and sign in. And when we do it this way, it will automatically find our server. And you can see that we can name it. We'll just keep it as that and allow me to access media from outside our house. More likely than not, you're going to want to do that, so just leave that checked. So here's something that actually got me hung up for a long time. Um, and I had to do some searching around to try and figure out what happened. Turned out it was a permissions issue, but it wasn't actually on the Ubuntu side of things, where maybe the root user had permission, but the Plex user didn't. Um, it actually turned out to be with my Synology NFS share, where it only allowed administrator users, such as root, to access the files or the folders on the share, and Plex user didn't have um, permission. So let me show you what that looked like. And you just add movies, movies, however you want to name it. Browse. And for me, this was my share. And before, I was able to see this, but this did not show up. Because, as I just said, the Plex user did not have permission to view and read those shares. So what I actually had to do is go over to my Synology unit. <coughs> uh. 
and grant um, that user permission. And in this case, I just did everybody, but I think I can make it more strict and grant just Plex user permission, and I'm going to do that. But for my case, <clears throat> and this is my NFS share named Proxmox. As you can see, um, permissions, and I had to add this one right here. Um, and until I did that, when administrators was the only one that could read it, only root could use it, could use, could see it, and that's why I was able to CD into it as the root user, but Plex was not able to see those folders. So as soon as I added this permission, Plex was able to see it, <clears throat> and everything was good from there. I was able to add more folders. They showed up right away, and then I was able to, you know, add my add my movies as I expected. So go ahead and click next and done. And you see it's popping right up and it's downloading that metadata and everything to support that movie information. And there we go. The movies are in, and now you can add all your media and get all your shares on your Synology while your Plex is running on your Proxmox machine. Thanks.